Welcome to the CFA Level 1 presentation on Confidence Intervals. This is our second video on this topic. In the previous video, we got an introduction to confidence intervals and we looked at their advantages. We also learned how to compute confidence intervals for large samples with known population variance. In this presentation, we will focus on the remaining three cases. We will learn how to compute confidence intervals for large samples with unknown population variance, as well as small samples with known and small samples with unknown population variance. For all of the examples we use in this presentation, we will create a 95% confidence interval for the average salary of all MBA graduates in the United States. We will assume that the sample mean is $120,000 and also the standard deviation is $91,836.73. This may represent the population standard deviation or the sample standard deviation depending on the example. Also recall from our previous video that any confidence interval is of this general form. Point estimate plus minus standard error times reliability factor. A very important point you should remember about choosing a reliability factor. It does not matter whether we are dealing with a large sample or a small sample. And a large sample is any sample which has at least 30 observations. When we choose a reliability factor, we ask ourselves only one question. Do we know the population variance or not? If we do, we choose the Z statistic as the reliability factor. And if we don't, then we use the T statistic as the reliability factor. And the degrees of freedom in the T statistic is equal to n minus 1, where n represents your sample size. There is one important thing you should remember about small samples. We can only create confidence intervals if we can safely assume that the population distribution is normal. If the population distribution is not normal, then we cannot create a confidence interval for small samples. This is different than the case for large samples, where it does not matter whether the population distribution is normal or not. We can still create confidence intervals for large samples. In this presentation, I'm assuming that you know the differences between the standard normal distribution, which is used to compute the Z statistic, and the student's T distribution that is used to compute the T statistic. But just to quickly recap, let's look at the differences between the standard normal distribution and the T distribution. The red curve here represents the standard normal distribution, whereas the blue curve represents the T distribution with five degrees of freedom, and the golden curve represents the t-distribution with two degrees of freedom. First of all, notice that the standard normal distribution is more peaked than the t-distributions. So the peak for the red curve is higher than the peak for the blue curve, which in turn is higher than the peak for the golden curve. As you increase the degrees of freedom for a t-distribution, the peak will get higher and higher and approach the normal distribution. The second thing to notice is that the tails for these two T distributions, so this golden curve and this blue curve, these tails are thicker than the red tail, which is the normal distribution. This means that more data points lie in the tails of the T distribution compared to the tail of the normal distribution. What this means is that if you create a confidence interval using a t-distribution, your confidence interval 
will be wider compared to creating a confidence interval using a normal distribution. Now let's look at this table which computes the confidence intervals for all the possible scenarios. The first row is simply a recap from the previous video. We have a large sample since we have more than 30 observations. The population variance is known, which means we use the Z statistic as the reliability factor. And this term is simply the general form for any confidence interval. This amount represents the point estimate. This is our standard error. And this is the reliability factor. The second row is also a large sample, but the population variance is unknown, which means we use a t-statistic with n minus 1 degrees of freedom, which means we have 35 degrees of freedom. And we use the reliability factor of 2.03. So the only difference between the first row and the second row is the reliability factor. If you look at the third row, we have a small sample with known population variance, which means we use the Z statistic. Now, if you compare the third row with the first row, the only difference is in the standard error, or more specifically, the sample size. Here we have 36 observations, and here we have 25 observations. The reliability factor for both the third row and the first row is the same. And that's always true when we use the Z statistic. For example, whenever we create a 95% confidence interval using the Z statistic, our reliability factor would always be 1.96. So the confidence interval in row three will be wider than the confidence interval for row one because row three has a larger standard error. Finally, we have row four, which is again a small sample with unknown population variance, which means we use a t-statistic with 24 degrees of freedom, which gives us a reliability factor of 2.06. If we compare row two with row four, there are two differences. First is of course in the sample size, which means that the standard error for row four would be greater than the standard error for row two. But there's one more thing. The reliability factor for row four is 2.06, which is based on 24 degrees of freedom whereas the reliability factor for the second row is based on 35 degrees of freedom and therefore is lower than the reliability factor for row four. As we saw earlier, as we keep increasing the degrees of freedom for the t-distribution, the reliability factor will start decreasing. Therefore, the confidence interval for row four will be wider than the confidence interval for row two because of two reasons. First, row four has a higher standard error and second, row four has a higher reliability factor. If you do the math, you will notice that row one has the narrowest confidence interval because if you compare it to row two, they both have the same sample size but row one had a smaller reliability factor based on the Z statistic. Then if you look at row three, this is wider than row two because row three is a small sample. And finally, we have row four, which is the widest confidence interval of them all. It's wider than row three because row four is based on the T statistic. Now this brings us to an end to this presentation. If you found the video useful, please make sure to like it and to subscribe to our channel. Thanks very much for watching and wish you the best of luck on the exam.